Guys, uh, Ruth Lucas, I'm going to teach you a little from the fundamental of that, then I'm going to move to MATLAB and we are done, okay? So, in this class, we began uh, to drive the dynamics equation of the systems, and then we transferred from time domain to frequency domain, and uh, of obviously, the realization, and we got the transfer function. So, uh, for example, if you have this x double dot plus 2x dot plus x, suppose it's equal to u dot plus u. Remember what was u? The control input to the system, right? Yes? So this is the external force or the controller to the system. And this is the internal dynamics of the system. Internal, internal dynamics. And this is external that we are forcing the system to go this way yes everybody huh so if i apply apply the laplace if you had differential equation course always right hand side this side is the side that you want to move system toward that side okay the left hand side is the dynamics of the system by itself okay so if the, i assume that the initial conditions are zero so we what you're going to get is x of s is s square plus 2s plus 1 and because you have u dot you're going to have a u of s it's going to be s plus 1 so x over u output toward the input of the system here is s plus 1 divided by s square plus 2s plus 1 yes or no yes everybody yes. guys this s plus 1 came from where came from look at here all of you here right from left hand side or uh, right hand side? Right. So it came from the external force. Now, the denominator came from where, which side? Came from, yes, internal. So what are the roots of the numerator, as I told you previously? What are the roots of the name of the numerator? Numerator. What we name those? The roots of the numerator. Technical name and control. Another one. Another one. What are the roots of the denominator? We named it in the control. Poles. Poles. What are roots of the numerator in the control? Do you have it in your notes? What we named it? Start Yes, zeros. So, as I told you, this is not controlled. This is differential equation course. You are forcing your system finally move toward external forces. Clear? So, your system dynamics move from poles toward what? Toward what? Zero. The name of this is root locus. Root locus plot. We want to see, because generally speaking, close the transfer function is open the transfer function for 1 plus g. Open the transfer function. And I told you in your notes, you have it, that you can write a transfer function as a gain 
okay and s plus z1 until s plus zm divided by s plus p1 to s plus pn remember that we had previously huh? so on the other hand you want to change in the root locus we're going to change the gain of the system dc gain okay the gain of the system from zero to infinity and see how the poles of the system moves toward the zeros of the system okay. and this is happening in reality in real physics based on differential equation poles moving toward zeros everybody clear yes yes everybody good so how we want the poles of the system i told you from here the numerator is zero so going to the next page one plus g is zero or g upon the transfer function is minus one okay guys i'm just writing g from here g is k s plus c1 until s plus s plus zm over s plus p1 s plus pn is minus one clear what i'm gonna do i told you i'm gonna change k so k gonna be minus s plus p1 s plus pn divided by s plus z1 s plus z m right okay guys for which values here k becomes zero for which value of the s k becomes zero you tell me you teach me this is from high school not control for which value of the s k is zero for which value of s k is zero for which values yes when s is minus p1 s is minus p2 as you pronounce it so what's the name of the p's you told me what's the name of the p's in control what's the name of the p's in control what what's the name of the p's in control what's the what's the name of the p's in control poles poles so k0 happens at the poles of the system given so for which value of the k k becomes infinity for which value of the s For which value of the S K becomes infinity? Yes, it's gonna be Z1 until it's gonna be Zm. So what's the name of the z uh, zero? It's gonna be zeros, that's right. So at zeros of the system. So when I said I'm gonna change from zero to infinity means I'm moving from the poles toward what zeros here we go now you understand the concept as it happening in reality in the physics of the system understand now in the root locus we want to see how the trajectory is in the complex plane I want to see how how it's gonna happen okay 
So when you are dealing with the complex number, because G is a complex number, that's right. G is minus 1 because it's S. Remember, S is J omega. Remember, it's a complex number. So when you have that, you have absolute value, magnitude of that, which is 1. And you have the phase angle of that. What's the phase angle of minus 1? It's easy. Minus 1 plus 0i. So what's the, what's the angle of that? If you get help from the unit circle from high school, you understand that. Okay. Here is tangent, here is 0, here is pi. It is minus 180 degree. That's right. Yes, it is minus pi. Understand everybody? Hmm? So it's minus 180. Okay. Let me go with an example and I'll teach you kind of. And then I'm going to go to MATLAB. Suppose that the G of a system is this, S plus 1 over S plus 3 in S plus 10. Okay, what you're going to do if you want to plot root locus, first you have to find the zeros of the system. Zero of the system is minus 1. What are the poles of the system? We have two poles. P1 is minus 3 and the P2 is minus 10. Then you're going to plot it in here. Imaginary real. I told you that you're going to show zeros by a circle like this minus one here like this and you're going to show the poles by minus three by cross and minus ten four five six seven eight nine ten okay so we have two poles and one zeros i told you in the root locus we are moving from the poles to what? Zeros. So, but it's obvious that two poles cannot move toward one zero. One of them is extra. When you see that the number of the poles is greater than zero, means one of the zeros is located at one of zeros located at infinity infinity okay understand so that's why this is your two focus one of them see in this arrow this pose moves here and this pose moves here here we go this is the root locus of your system. Obviously, here is gain zero. Here is gain infinity. If you have a gain here, k. Okay. Here is gain zero. And here at infinity is gain infinity. The name of this is root locus of a given system. Okay? Understand everyone? Go ahead. Now, let me go to another example. If open loop transfer function is k over s plus 1 in s plus 4 in s plus 7. How many zeros the system has? How many zeros the system has? Huh? 
None. How many poles the system has? What are the poles? Minus one. Minus four. And minus seven. So let us do that. So, imaginary real. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Minus one, minus four, and minus. But I told you that in the root locus, by changing the gain, poles from uh, uh, the trajectory goes from poles to zeros, but there is no zeros. Means that zeros are located at where? At where? Like as previous case? At infinity, a far distance infinity, then they are not reachable. Okay, so what we have to do? So this says that okay, so the poles gonna move. Write it down. Toward zeros by. Okay, asymptotics, asymptotics, asymptotics. Okay, how many asymptotics that we're gonna have? Okay, number of asymptotics is equal to n minus m, number of the poles minus number of zeros. What are the number of the poles that you told me? What are the number of the poles? Three. Number of the zeros? Zero. So you're going to have three asymptotics. Okay. So when I say asymptotic, okay, there's going to be angle for that, angle of asymptotic, angle of asymp, and the location of asymptotic, asymptotic. Location going to be minus sum of zeros of the system. These are the formulas. Minus sum of poles of the system divided by n minus m. So let us do that together. X of asymptotic, asymptotic gonna be minus. There is there are no zeros, so this goes away. Minus number of the poles, minus one, minus four, minus seven. Divided by 3, n minus m. So this is going to be um, uh, this is going to be uh, 6, 4. So it's going to be minus 4. Yes? It's going to be so it's going to be asymptotic going to be here. Okay, so the angle of asymptotic. Oops, no, please, for God's sake. <laughs> so the angle of asymptotic has this formula. Angle of asymptotic gonna be plus minus 180 2k plus 1 divided by n minus m. So here going to be plus 180, 2k plus 1 at 3, because n minus m is 3. When k is 0, 1, and So let us try k0. If I do that, 
and I'll be asymp and I'll be plus minus 180 divided by 3 and I'll be plus minus 60 sorry yes everybody so it's gonna say one two of the asymptotics gonna be this oh this is say minus 60 plus 60 and minus 60 see this is plus 60 this is minus 60 everybody right yes hmm So we need another we need another asymptotic because we have three asymptotics. See? The number of asymptotics is n minus m. We got two. So let us put k1. If you put k1 angle of asymptotic gonna be plus minus 180 in three divided by three. Here we go. Gonna be plus 180. Or minus 180, it doesn't matter because it's gonna so here's plus 180, minus 180. So one of the asymptotics is gonna be let me change the color here. This is one of the asymptotics. One, two, and three. Everybody clear? Yes. Yes. Okay, so being said that, we easily understand if this is the pole, one of these poles move toward the zeros located at infinity through this path. Here we go. Here we go. And here is k0, and here is k infinity. The other, the other poles move toward the zeros look at the infinity by by asymptotics so it's gonna be like this goes to look at that infinity see so the root locus of this one of them goes the, the through this asymptotic to at k infinity or zero located there here is k zero k infinity and another goes through this asymptotic sense. Understand? Yes? Hmm? Good. So this is what look as of this. And interesting that you see guys about the stability of the system. In, because here is k0 increasing, increasing, coming, coming, coming. Oops. Gonna cross imaginary axis, right? So when that happens, means one of the poles becomes pure imaginary. This reminds you the first class of this semester. Means, means what? One of the poles or two of the poles becomes pure imaginary. The system gonna be stable, unstable, or margin stable. Okay. If the poles are pure imaginary, unstable, stable, or margin stable. Okay. Yes, it has pendulum. That's right, remember? But if you increase more k, the poles move toward the right hand side from here. So your system becomes stable. So you see that you are not free to select any game that you want because by selecting many large values, you're going to make the system stable. Understand everyone? Yes? Great. So the question is that which point this gonna leave the poles moves toward the zero? The name of this is breakaway point. Break breakaway point in control. 
break away point. You have to know about that. So, how we calculate that? It's easy. Using the condition of magnitude, guys. Oops. What is that? This. This. So, because K over S plus, what was that, the system? S plus, oh no, 147. 1 in S plus 4 in S plus 7. Its magnitude is 1. You can say K is equal to S plus 1 in S plus 4 in S plus 7. Now what you're going to do, you're going to put the DK or DS is 0. We have to calculate this. And it's going to give you the breakaway point. So for this case, it's going to be S4 plus 5S plus 4 in S plus 7. So the result is going to be S cubed plus 7 plus 5 s square plus plus um, 35 plus 4 in s plus 28 if I'm not wrong right s cube plus 7 7 plus 5 s square plus 35 plus 4 s yeah so you're gonna be s cubed plus 12 s square plus um, 39 s plus 28 so ds over dk gonna be 3 s cubed s square plus 24 s plus 39 this equals to 0 Right? So from here, you can find the S. Let's just do that in MATLAB because I'm going to move to MATLAB gradually for the root of this, okay? So if I go to the MATLAB, I hope that I didn't make any mistake. 5 plus 35 plus 4, 39. Yes. Scrolling. This is cool. Okay. Oh, this is Jacobin I was teaching today. So, Sims X gonna be uh, uh, roots equal to be double solve. What was the equation? Can you please read for me? 3x square plus. 24s x plus 39 so so if I solve this so it's going to be minus 5 uh, minus 5 7 minus 2 2 you have two breakaway points now look at here one of them is minus 5. This is 4. One of them is here. Is it possible to be here? Break away point? No. Must be inside. So it's minus 2. 1, 2, minus 2.2. 2. Almost here. So we found here the breakaway point is minus 2.2 2, as we found it.
This is not arbitrary that leaves from everywhere. See what I'm saying? Everybody? Yes? Yes. Great. Okay. So, now let us go into the math lab. Um, this is the problem that we had. A was 101, B was, oh, oh right. so num calls to 0001, and then was the characteristic equation was this that we found here. I mean, when we multiplied all of these together, we came up with this, see this? S squared, please read this for me, okay? To, to find an answer. Um, read for me. S, 3, uh, 12, uh, what was that? 39. Uh-huh. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. So if I say R locus num then oops okay and I'm saving as root lock because I'm gonna share with you. Oh it's I saved in okay it doesn't matter. I'm gonna change it So if I do that What? Something is wrong here. So it's not that. Well, it takes imaginary numbers, so something is wrong. Um, One four seven. So let me do like this. There is a mistake here. So say uh, A is one and one, B is one and four, and the C is one and one and seven. Okay. So M one is convolution of a and b a and b and uh, then gonna be um, m1 m1 and c Oh, kind of. Why am I? Okay. Okay, so if I do that, 1, 12. Oh, it is 1. Why I saw 3? Oh my god, I see that now. Okay. 1, 12, 13, 20. Okay. <laughs> you don't need that. Why is it 3? I'm stupid. Okay. Now it's going to plot what we had previously. Oh, plotted. Okay. Do you see, guys? Exactly as we plotted. From this pole through asymptotic goes to infinity, this pose goes to infinity. See what I'm saying? Yes? Yes. Good. Now, let me name this as figure one. Now, let me have 
a transfer function that has a pair of complex conjugate poles. And that means we name it as the second order system. Norm one is equal to zero zero one, and then one gonna be one one and four. This gonna give you what a pair of complex conjugate poles. S square plus S plus four. No doubt. Now you know it. So if I say that uh, plot root locus of that for me, num1 and then 1. Okay, here is 0 and 0. This have a pair of complex conjugate poles. So it says you have two asymptotics that they are exactly located here, okay? One of them goes from here to zero as infinity, another goes from zero to infinity. And here is k zero, here is k zero, and here is k infinity, k infinity. It says the root locus, it's plus for you. And it says pole is at minus 0.5, plus damping ratio is this, overshoot is this, this system. Frequency, Nash frequency is this, it gives you everything. It's interesting, right? Yes, everybody? Huh? Now, let me add a zero to this, to this system. Not only poles. Uh, I'm going to have the under damp system, but I'm going to add a zero. At minus one uh, let me put that uh, at three mm, i think it's zero two two uh, i'm gonna add this as a figure three and two and two now let's see what's the difference between by adding a zero. Oh, they are the same poles. Didn't change. See? They are the same poles. See? Okay. See, they are the same poles. Didn't change. Only the damping change and the frequency overshoot is almost the same. But I added zero here as minus three. So the poles going to move one of them goes to zero here. Another pole going to move goes to zero at, you tell me, at, at where? At yeah. infinity. So this is the root locus of the system by changing the gain from zero to infinity. Understand everyone? Yeah. Now, now, let me do this for final case, which looks interesting. Num three three and three three and four, and I'm gonna make um, a third order system. And uh, here gonna one 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 four. Let me first try it here. I want to make sure that uh, solve gonna one uh, one one plus four. No. Yeah, that's fine. What was this thing? Um, 110, 14. 110, Okay, now let me plot this. And and has a zero at minus three. And these are the poles of the system. Do you see? Poles of the system. And all of them on the left hand side. Okay. Oh! 
So we have three poles. See, show them across. One, two, three. One of the poles located as minus, see, minus 10 almost here. Another is a pair of complex conjugate poles, very close to origin, but complex conjugate, okay? A real part is 0 0.03, if you zoom in, and 0 0.43, with the imaginary part of this. So, one of the poles moves from the asymptotic here. Another poles, they are moving asymptotic to here, and the asymptotic here. Toward the zeros and infinity. See what I'm saying? Yes? So what it says to you, it says that for this system, if you change the gain, gain is k0, k0, k0. k zero. Here's k infinity, here's k infinity, here's k infinity. If you change the k from 0 to infinity, your system never become unstable because even everything is in the left hand side. See what I'm saying, everybody? Yes? Clear, everybody? Yes. Okay. So, because your system has three poles and one zero, how many asymptotic you're going to have? How many asymptotic you're going to have? N minus M. N is number of the poles, zero is one of them. So, you're going to have two asymptotic. So, these are the asymptotic, see? Two asymptotic. Because this, there's no asymptotic. This goes for here. Do you know what I'm saying? If I go here for this system, click on zeros, it says because you have a pair of complex conjugate poles and this vanishes too fast because 10 times of this has a damping ratio of this, an overshoot of 86 percentage, guys. 86 percentage overshoot. And the natural frequencies and the poles and the even that you can you can plot it here guys for God's sake. See step whatever I taught you you can examine it in MATLAB. Now and then three. I bet one million dollar that this is gonna have huge overshoot because problem says. See? Now I'm three then three. Let's do that. Here we go. Huge overshoot, 86 percentage on the subtle slot. A very under damp system. See what I'm saying? For step response. Now, knowing this, you can design PID controller. I told you to fix this to, to limit the overshoot or the overshoot time, whatever I taught you previously. Clear, everybody? Yes, and that's it, and we are done, so let me first stop it.